So, today we're going to be talking about Mamantine, which is one of these things that I think in the nootropics world um, uh, tends to fall a lot into that category of uh, things that people are trying to use to self-medicate. Because as I've said, a lot of that you know goes on in the nootropics world. Uh, people are, are kind of trying to self-medicate for things too. It's not always just how to get a mental boost. Um, but, you know, it does have some neutrophic potential, I think, so we'll come back to that. Um, so, Mamantine, uh, it, it, it's pretty old. I think it's been around, um, well, no, it's been around for a few decades, certainly. Uh, and uh, it's, 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 it's Alzheimer's drug, uh, primarily. Um, I think they've, you know, looked at its use for other sorts of dementia, too. Uh, but that's the main clinical use, and there's a lot of um, other things that have been uh, looked at, uh, some research that's going on, I think, still for, like, using it for other things. Uh, but um, it's uh, primarily an NMDA antagonist, um, or at least it's how it's thought of. Uh, it does have a pretty strong affinity for the, the D2 receptor as well. Um, that that's really like comparable to uh, the affinity that it has for uh, the NMDA receptor, and I've seen different things about this exact affinity for the D2 receptor. Maybe a little less. Maybe it's it's like actually has more affinity, but uh, it, we'll say it's in the same ballpark. Okay, so it it does have some strong dopaminergic activity as well, and uh, that's one of the things I think is probably maybe a little underestimated about, or, uh, I don't know, neglected or overlooked a lot about memantine. People think of it as just an NMDA antagonist, and, um, you know, most of these drugs, they have these profiles of, you know, affinities they have for certain things, and we tend to oversimplify, so, um, and of course, you know, it has some, uh, it, it, five, um, 5-HT3 receptor, I think. Uh, it does have some serotonergic activity. Um, and uh, it, it works on a, a sigma receptor, too. So, I mean, it, it has these different things that it's doing, but... Uh, NMDA antagonism is a thing that is classically known as. Um, and... Uh, uh, It's not, it's not a full agonist, so uh, the importance of this is that um, uh, NMDA, it's, it's a glutamate receptor, and um, it works by, uh, well, it, it's important for, you know, long-term potentiation, it's important for a lot of, you know, cognitive functions, uh, higher cognitive functions, and... Uh, the thing is, you don't want a full agonist because uh, basically it interferes with your func your normal functioning too much. And um, the NMDA antagonism you get from a mantine is not... It, it's really convenient because it allows you to uh, still function normally, uh, but it, pre it helps prevent this excess glutamate. So, actually, let's take a step back and look at why, why you use an NMDA antagonist in, um, uh, well, Alzheimer's disease, for example. So, with Alzheimer's, uh, you know, there's still um, a lot that's not understood about it, but, um, you know, there, you get this uh, glutamate excitotoxicity. You've probably heard about this. It's, you know, if you have too much, uh, well, glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter. It's the primary excitatory neurotransmitter in the brain. And when you have too much of it, you overexcite the cell, the neurons, and uh, this, this kills them, basically. Uh, so, um, what you do with, in Alzheimer's disease also, these, these plaques that you can get, um, the amyloid beta plaques, they uh, they kind of, uh, they somehow, I don't know how, but they make the neurons more susceptible to this excitotoxicity. So, um, you, you get, uh, you're really accept, um, susceptible to cell death and Alzheimer's. Obviously, you know, when you get it, you know, your brain atrophies. And uh, I guess the idea behind using an NMDA antagonist, such as mamantine, is that it, uh, it kind of blocks that... Uh, excess glutamate signaling, uh, but it allows you to still have normal functioning still. So it's nice, and um, 
you know, I don't know exactly why it's used in all these other disorders. Um, I know it's uh, looked at in things like uh, from like autism, OCD, bipolar, depression. It's being looked at um, for a lot of things. And, um, you know, I know, like, like I said, certainly in the, the nootropics community and the supplement community and whatever, people were really using this to try to self-medicate a lot of the time, but not all the time. Um, the thing about it is because it, it, it uh, I, I guess a lot of the times people do, exp I said it doesn't interfere with normal functioning, but I think um, a lot of the time when people start, uh, they do get a sort of a brain fog on it. And um, I guess, you know, it's temporarily and after it subsides, uh, they feel they have increased mental clarity and, you know, it, it kind of has a long-term nootropic effect. So, as a nootropic, it could actually be really nice as well because, you know, a lot of things that we take, we take them because of their short-term effect, like amphetamines, for example, and then, you know, you down-regulate or, you know, something changes in order to bring you back closer to your baseline, and then, you know, you kind of need a thing to function, so it's a short-term solution. But memantine could be, you know, a really good nootropic possibly in the long run because you know, you're kind of going the other direction, you're making things harder on yourself, it's kind of like exercise, you know, you're like, you're, I guess you're, you know, you're throwing things off from where you want to be, but then when it compensates, it's bringing you closer, or, you know, it's, it, it, you know, the up regulation or down, I guess in this case, up regulation, uh, probably would be compensating for the memantine, and then you're left, you know, with this, this more NMDA receptors, and, um, I don't know. The idea is that you, you get increased mental clarity, so uh, it's a long-term thing. But, uh, uh, I, I, you know, I, um, I would be definitely be careful with memantine because memantine has up to an 80-hour half-life. And uh, I think of anything that I've ever taken, that's, that's got to be the longest half-life. And... Uh, typically what people do is that when they try it, they try it uh, 5 milligrams. Uh, what, what I did when I tried it, like the way that I recommend, uh, you try 5 milligrams uh, every other day. And then uh, do that for a week. And if, that, if you're still doing good with it, um, then you would go to uh, 10 milligrams every other day for a week. And then uh, if, if it's still going, you want to, going good, and you want to increase it, then you do 10 milligrams still, but you do it every day for a week. Uh, I think I first saw that suggestion somewhere on Reddit. That's what I did, and that worked out for me. So, uh, the other nice thing about the Half-Life is, um, so you got to be careful with it, but the other nice thing about it is uh, you shouldn't have any problems, like, just stopping it cold turkey. You, uh, because, you know, the long half-life kind of takes away any need that you would have for having to, you know, taper down. Um, so, uh, these are all things to consider to, act, you know, if you do actually want to take it. Um, and, uh, I think that's all I got from Amantine. Uh, NMD antagonist, uh, traditionally used for Alzheimer's disease, yada, yada, yeah. I think I hit it all. Um... But then, of course, you know, I'm going to get into more of my personal experience with it and why I took it uh, in a later video. Uh, so until then, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll uh, see you next time.